Hi, I'm Daniel. Today I'd like to take a moment to talk about dogs. They are man's best friend and, and they hold this special portion of humanity's heart. And they're able to tug at our heartstrings unlike anything else. And that's why, and, and I applaud them for it, entertainers, marketers, and every corporation that you can think of uses these cute little animals to tug at our heartstrings and ease our wallets into a temporary stasis of obedience where we, we give our money because the animals are cute and, and we, we like them. Uh, now this is not an uncommon thing. It's a practice that's been used, uh, especially in the entertainment industry for years and years and years. Uh, and you know, it's done with good intentions. You know, oh, everybody loves dogs and, and so people will pay to see dogs and you know, as long as they're treated right, which is great, that's awesome, that's, that's cool. And people like dogs, so that's great. Uh, the game we're looking at today is similar in that you are literally taking on a dog's life, which is the name of the game. You, the player, get to experience escapism in a way that is a little bit different than perhaps a lot of other forms of entertainment. You get to take on being a dog and living out a dog's life. Yes, that's right. This means you get to experience everything you've dreamed being a dog is like. Scrounging for food, running from dog catchers, fighting other dogs, you know, potentially fending off starvation, uh, urinating publicly without being judged. The point is, this game takes the player, shoves them into this game, and says, you're a dog, be the first one to bury three bones in your home base, and you win. A Dog's Life is a reprint of the 2001 game by the same name. The art has been updated and the rules have been slimmed down. In this game, players choose from a number of dogs to personify and are randomly given a starting location that becomes essentially their home base for the game. The dog's goal is to be the first to find and bury three bones in their base. When that's accomplished, the game ends and a winner is declared. A player's turns are split into three phases. One, food, which is essentially just moving your hunger meter space down by one. If you ever start your turn with a hunger meter at zero, you go straight to the pound, where you're given plenty of food but can't do much else. Two, dog stuff. This is where the meat of the game happens. Each dog has a certain amount of action points that can be allotted to various tasks. A number of these actions will have players flip the top card of their personal dog deck. Depending on what action they're taking, they resolve the effects accordingly. Actions that don't require flipping a card are moving at a speed of one space per action point, drinking from a fountain to fill your bladder, marking your territory on a light pole, or picking up a newspaper for delivery, uh, an action that can eventually earn you food or bones, or burying a bone. Actions that require flipping a card are dropping off a newspaper, begging at restaurants, digging in trash cans, fighting other dogs, attempting to flee from the dog catcher, or attempting to escape the pound. When one of these actions is done, you flip the top card from your deck and consult the icon for the effect. Each dog can only hold two items in its mouth, so this can either be newspaper or bones. Food is directly filled up with a token on the player board, and fights are resolved between two dogs in adjacent spaces comparing the paw prints on their cards. Finally, there's the dog catcher phase, and it's the last phase of the turn. Uh, you roll a die for the dog catcher. This vehicle can only move forward, thus making dogs far more agile. However, if the dog catcher ever lands next to another dog, they must flip a card and see if they are captured or escape. If it ever lands on top of a dog, they immediately go to the pound where they'll stay for a maximum of three turns, flipping cards each turn to potentially escape early. To be completely honest, the theme of a dog's life was a bit of a turnoff for me. I like dogs alright, but as far as things that happen in my everyday life, seeing dogs do dog stuff is pretty high on the old ordinary things to see list. I was pleasantly relieved and surprised, however, at how involved I found myself getting into this game. It's going to appeal far, far more to dog people than any anyone else, which is great because the game radiates that vibe. But it's just as inviting, if not quite as enticing, to the general player. The weight is absolutely family level, and the strategic depth I would put perhaps just below that of a game like Ticket to Ride. But there's plenty in this game to really like. But I'll get to that in a minute. If you're jumping into this game looking for a heavy strategic game, you're going to be sorely disappointed. There's a not unsubstantial amount of randomness in this game that, while not overly problematic to me, might be too much to overlook for some players. The actions you take are often determined by the flip of a card, and while the dog's descriptions in the rulebook give an idea as to which dogs are better at which actions, without going through the deck it ends up just being a crapshoot. You may be slowly starving and get three bad draws in a row so that you're going to be spending time in the pound. 
The fact that the most important actions in the game are all determined by your small deck of cards means that, for all your strategy and planning, you're left to the will of chance. The biggest strategic component to the game, oddly enough, is peeing on lampposts. When a player enters a spot that's been marked by another player, they instantly lose the rest of their action points. With this in mind, you can corral your opponents and section off pieces of the board. I can also see how the theme would be a bit of a no-go for some people, and honestly I thought I was going to be one of those people. But despite really hitting the fact that the dogs are all wearing hats, I found myself really enjoying this for a number of reasons. First and foremost, the production value of this game is through the roof. I absolutely love the way the game looks. The box art it looks like a movie poster, the board is vibrant and popping, albeit a little busy at times. Uh, then the components themselves. Painted miniatures of the dog characters are better and more detailed than the vast majority of the games in my collection. Even the dog catcher truck is painted and every bit of component and artwork fits together seamlessly. I'm a big visuals guy and have not bought games that I really enjoyed the gameplay of simply because I didn't like the way the game looked. Despite luck being a factor, I felt like I was in control the whole time. Personally, I'm alright with a bit of luck, and being able to spend action points however I wanted gave me a smorgasbord of options when my turn rolled around. The end goal of burying three bones was just enough to keep the game interesting without allowing too much time to go by. 40 to 50 minutes is about accurate, and with the element of luck playing so large a part, player turns never felt over long due to analytical thinking gone wild. The rulebook is vibrant and clear, further adding to my enjoyment of this game. Look, obviously if the theme is a turnoff for you, or the luck factor scares you, steer clear. This is marketed as a family weight game, and I think the theme and mechanisms complement that perfectly. It's silly enough fun and a good enough looking game that I was thoroughly impressed and can honestly recommend A Dog's Life.